Oh, yes. It is time. Time for Jay Act to react to Hell in a Cell, WWE pay-per-view. Last night, what does J-Rock think about what just happened? Oh, it's time to t get to this. Let's do it. If you smell. What J-Rock is cooking. Finally, J-Rock has come back to YouTube. What is happening in, 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 with the millions <laughs> and millions of J-Rock's fans from all over the world watching now? We are right here in the SmackDown Hotel on the corner of Know Your Old Boulevard and Jabroni Drive. It is time for J-Rock to react to Hell in a Cell. J-Rock says this, WWE, J-Rock has a suggestion. You should take and change the name from WWE Hell in a Cell to What the Hell? Because that's what J-Rock wants to know. What the hell was that? Are, are you kidding? Are you kidding? Last night was a prime example of why I don't follow WWE like I used to. Here's what I say what I mean. It's not that I don't know who's who. It's not that I don't know who's the champion. But when I say I don't follow it like I used to, I don't remember the last time I've actually sat down and watched a full episode of Raw from start to finish. Like, I don't remember the last time I've done that. It, I, I, I couldn't tell. You. And up until last Friday night, this past Friday, which was premiere on SmackDown on Fox, that was the first time I've actually sat down and watched maybe longer than 10, 15 minutes of a SmackDown. Like, I cannot tell you how long it's been since I've watched the full episode of either. NXT is a different story. NXT is way better than Raw and SmackDown right now. Their matches are better. Now, I get they don't have the high-profile names or the high-profile wrestlers. I get that. But their matches, the way they tell the stories in the ring, is way better. Hell, they could have used some NXT last night. Matter of fact, the best match from last night were two wrestlers who were formerly with NXT. Sasha Banks and Becky Lynch. That was the best match of the whole night. Top to bottom. Sasha Banks and Becky Lynch. The only match that came remotely close to that one was the Tornado match with uh, Roman Reigns, Daniel Bryant, and the Bludgeon Brothers, which I guess they're not called that no more, Luke Harper, and Eric Rowan. Like, those are the... That was like... Other than that, I didn't too much care for anything else in the match. A lot of that stuff was just thrown together last minute. None of that stuff was promoted leading up to the event. It was all about the fiend Bray Wyatt and Seth Rollins. WWE, you're doing it again, man. You're not learning from the mistakes that you've made you're not learning from the mistakes that other failed wrestling organizations have made primarily WCW you're not learning from those mistakes and that is you keep putting guys in the main event without building them up to that place Whatever happened to a guy starting at the bottom, building up a following, becoming an Intercontinental Champ or a Tag Champ, mainly the Intercontinental Champ, because you, you remember back in the old days when a guy was the Intercontinental Champion, usually he was next in line to become the World Champion because he had built a following. People, were, people could really believe that he worked hard. 
Because the people that you're selling to aren't guys who are CEOs. You're, 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 you're talking to middle class America for the most part. Hardworking people who understand the value of earning a dollar. Those are the people that you're talking to. Those are the people you were trying to relate to. And so when you take a guy who's basically had one match, put him in the main event, and you wonder why fans were booing. Let me let Jay Rock ask this question. Whose bright idea was it to turn a hell in a cell into the red light district? Who who came up with that bright idea? Rufus. Was that your monkey ass? That was your idea. Man, wasn't? I ain't had nothing to do with that, cuz. Yeah, yeah, it was your idea. That's uh, that's something like something. You, you're full-fledged retard. Jabroni. Yeah, yeah, you put your brain in a parrot. Zing, it'll fly backwards. Man, f*** you. Hey, hey, right back at you, Jabroni. Shut your candy ass up. But they rock little smack down on your monkey ass. Punk. Anyway. Whose bright idea was it to turn the hell in the cell into the red light district? Okay, you want to turn you want to turn the lights off and make it all ominous and red. You've already changed the hell in the cell to red. And so now you want to turn the damn match to red. Okay. How about this? How about you make the rec the hell in the cell match regular? Turn the lights on. And then as some turning point or climactic point in the match, it goes red. Maybe use it to cover up blood. I don't know. But the whole match in red, really? And fans were booing. Oh, I was watching it. I could hear the boos. Because I'm sit sitting there watching it like, what the hell is this? What are they doing? And for the... A Hell in a Cell match ended because they said a guy went too far. If anybody should have gone too far with how they're trying to sell him, it should have been Bray Wyatt. It should have been him going too far. Because there are certain guys good guys that when they win matches in order to get them to connect and to relate to people you have to present them as an underdog you have to constantly put challenges in front of them to where they are the underdog and they have to overcome those challenges it worked with stone cold it worked with the rock it worked with Shawn michaels hell it even worked for a little bit with john cena you put obstacles in front of them and made them seem so insurmountable that when they overcome those obstacles, you have fans are connected to that person, connected to that wrestler. I get it that Seth Rollins is the champion, but he's not as connected as I think he could be. Because they're making him seem like the giant and it should be by when he was going against Brock Lesnar. People were rooting for Seth because he was supposed to be the underdog, and Brock was the big dog, the top dog. That works. It still works. But now, they got Seth seeming... What was that? You're killing the momentum that you spent all this time building with Bray Wyatt. Who I still think doesn't quite get it as far as performing in the ring. Stone Cold said something about that he'd like to see from Bray Wyatt. Is that when Bray Wyatt get in the ring, have him start working on a body part. Like a knee, uh, an ankle, an arm, a shoulder, uh, 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 your, your, your abdomen, your back. Something that he is going to pinpoint for that match. Now it puts the other guy at a disadvantage. Now he has to overcome. And I get it. They were trying to make Bray Wyatt seem like Jason or Freddy Krueger. Like he just won't stay down. Seth was doing an okay job of selling that. Okay, he was doing a good job of that. Now Bray Wyatt, I, the whole idea of him wearing that creepy mask. Listen, there were three guys when they debuted. Kind of, I was a little uncomfortable. Undertaker, Kane, and Bray Wyatt, the Fiend. It was a little uncomfortable. 
All right. Bray Wyatt, I'll admit, his whole fiend persona and the way they're doing the, the lights and that whole, you know, screeching music, that, that, I'll get it. That, that works. That's working. But now you're killing it, man. You are destroying all that work. Why don't you just build the guy up? Let him keep continuing to grow. I like how you did it at SummerSlam with him and Finn Balor. That was good. And now Finn's over in NXT. And I think he'll do fine. I think, I think he'll do great, actually. But now you kill him. Now you put him in the main event. And you have him seem like the sympathetic figure when he's supposed to be the monster, the, the creep, the maniac, the psycho. He's the one that should have been gone too far. Not Seth. Seth is the guy who's supposed to be overcoming and connecting that fans are feeling sorry for. Oh my God, Seth, are you okay? Now they're doing it for Bray Wyatt and like, oh my God. I, I got the WWE Network, but 95% because I wanted to watch NXT and the old stuff, the old, you know, the old Attitude Era stuff, right? When it actually was good. And yeah, I know the last couple of weeks with Raw, they've been better than what they used to be, but not enough to make me sit down and watch a whole episode from start to finish. Like, no. I'll watch a start to finish episode of NXT. I ain't watching a start to finish episode of Raw or SmackDown. Now, last Friday night was the first time I did it with SmackDown. I'll do a reaction video to that later with, you know, with Brock and Kane Velasquez, which was okay. I think we're on to something. But last night, Hell in a Cell, it, it was just literally what the hell. Like, no. The best match was Becky Lynch and Sasha Banks. And then from there, the, the pay-per-view just went down. They should have been the main event. They should have been the main event. I mean, if that's how you're going to end it, yeah, they should have been the main event. Because at least it would have it would have ended on a high note. That crap was some BS. Another reason why I won't pay my hard-earned money to travel anywhere to watch a live WWE event. Now, NXT is a different show now. Anyway, those are J-Rock's thoughts on Hell of a Cell from last night. Whether If you agree or disagree, post your comments down below. Let me know what you thought of Hell in a Cell last night. All right. If you appreciated J-Rock's reaction to this, make sure you hit that like button, you subscribe, and you share. J-Rock is trying to get to 1 million subscribers, and he cannot do it without you. J-Rock needs your help. So share this video. Let everybody know J-Rock is here. And also, make sure you hit that bell so you can be notified that it is time to be electrified. Until next time. If you smell what J-Rock is cooking.